All right. We are live. Hello and welcome to the first stream of the Battle of Wisconsin. I am Dish. I am here with Staminok, a.k.a. Logan. And Hello, everybody. Yeah, here we are. It is time for our first match. Are you excited? Yeah, it's going to be so cool. Southwest Tech against UW-Green Bay. It's going to be great. It is going to be a great time. Um, I am Dish. I am, to introduce myself a little more, I am from UW-Milwaukee. I am the manager and also a Lucio player, as well as Logan. Yes. I I pretty much only play that character. Kind of the one of the resident Lucio players at UWM. And as you can see by the profile picture. Yeah. Average um, Lucio fan. Yeah. It's okay. There's better skins, but... Yeah. I think Lucio is probably one of my favorite supports, honestly. He's really fun to play, in my opinion. At least compared to the other supports. So, a little bit behind the tournament structure and schedule. So, today is round one. Which is, again, um... SWCTC against Green Bay. And uh, there's a double elimination bracket. Lose twice, you're out. And first it's um first it's actually Oh, round robin. Right. Round robin first. And then the top four teams of each group, there's two groups, group A and B. Today we're watching group B. Um get promoted to the double elimination bracket based on the seeding on how they do during these uh, group stages. Um, th there's match one and two today. We're just going to be casting the first one and then we'll go to a short break and then round two will be, I believe it is um, UW Whitewater versus Marquette. So that's a great game coming up next. But today we are going to be focusing on these two teams, Southwest Tech and UW Green Bay, as you can see on the right side of the groups here, towards the bottom, you see that UW Green Bay and uh, Southwest Tech. Everyone's one and zero due to a buy round. Everyone has a buy round. This is where we start, and this is where we're heading. So this is a little bit of the roster for Southwest Tech. Uh, yeah, three DPS players, two support, one tank. Pretty good lineup. Um, I have seen some cases where there's multiple tanks, uh, depending on who specializes in one over the other. But that is not always that important to have. Right, and then we come here at the UW Green Bay lineup, which we might be a little more familiar with since we have played them actually in the NECC not too long ago, UW Milwaukee um our jv team and we got two tanks here three three dps two supports um pretty sure fate is mostly a staff or a coach but they are also eligible to play of course and when we go over to the map pool you can see all the maps that are available to pick during this tournament of course control map it's auto picked based on what round it is. Today we are going to be starting on Li Zhang, of course. Then we go over to Escort. Everyone's favorite circuit. I feel like that's picked almost every time. Flashpoint, Servasa, New Junk City, Push, all the maps there. Hybrid, got some Kings Row in there. Little like in bold. Looks like a great map pool. 
Yeah, despite Eichenwald being in the map pool, I don't think I've ever actually seen it in competitive play, at least tournament-wise. But we are about to head over to Li Jing Tower, so get ready for it. Yes, Li Jing Tower. Very a very, very popular map when it comes. Um, <clears throat> sorry to the to the control points. I think it's probably one of the most popular control points in my opinion. Yeah, it's, it's played a lot. It's definitely a, a really good one. Uh, needs a sort of a wide variety of comps depending on which control point it's on. Uh, there's. Uh, the gardens, which I believe is just the, um, the outside one, kind yeah. of. Usually yeah. Usually teams look for a sort of, usually like a dive or a rush type comp on that one. And then control right. center. Speaking of gardens. Great, great map We're to start here. out on. We're in. We're starting off. The first round of the first map. Ready for battle. In the first game of the. Battle of Wisconsin. As we look at the comps here coming out, I think Just... we, we were talking about this before the cast. I think the meta right now is very lenient. You can run many different things. As we can see, looks like both teams are coming out on two different comps here. Seems like Southwest Tech may be leaning toward a kind of Sigma Rush composition. Um, yes, not too sure how that's going to fare against UW Green Bay's sort of dive comp. Um, kind of interested to see how this is going to work out here, especially with all the different angles that the Sombra especially is going to be taking. Right, Sombra's going to be a big factor in this lineup, especially with that EMP. Right now they're kind of just poking a little bit. UW Green Bay kind of has the back side of the point. Oh, as Monkey gets really low. Almost falling in. Yeah. Good bubble. Ooh, Tater, first one to fall. Yes, and oh, with that DPS buy. gone, yep, so, so is their tank, and it looks like Green Bay will be getting the first control point. Oh, they're just control going to chase captain, down the supports a little. Yep, chasing down the supports, trying to get some exit kills. Will this Moira get so out? be able to finish this off here. Moira does get out. Yes. Southwest Tech switching very early to the Hog. Ooh. Is, ooh. Paying dividends right away. With that pick on the like, Ramble. It's on the Reaper and the Roadhog pick. It seems they're countering the Winston a little bit, which does come to fruition with the early pick here. Yes, the early swaps paying off as they get the control point almost right away back with the Reaper and the Hog. As Green Bay themselves counter picking too, going right to the Rissa. I'm sure they'll stick on the Sombra though, as they're 95% to you. Mm -hmm. Quite a few ults coming up on both sides. I imagine after this one fight on the bridge here, we're gonna see, I think, two or three ults using both sides. Big EMP catching out three of them, getting the hog and eliminating them right away. EMP such a strong ultimate that it looks like it's going the way as you. Yep, it's going the way of UW Green Bay as they take the control point back. A lot of counter picking happening here. A lot of swapping. UW yeah. Green Bay pulling the trigger a little bit earlier than Southwest Tech, but Southwest Tech coming in with almost five ultimates here. Yeah, um, without anything to really counter it, due to being Bay, just the uh, coming up on the assault and the air ult here. Um, it's like Southwest is going to burn four ultimates for this fight. Five ultimates for this fight. Ooh. With a great triple death blossom by Goose here. That was a big blossom. However, using five ultimates in one fight leaves them vulnerable to both the beat, which will probably come in line, online um, during the next fight and the visor so I'll be interested to see what they do to counter both of those ultimates as they are taking trying to take the bridge here trying to be careful not to get hooked off just like that big hook from flyer as he gets another one too and that should be a fight done here yeah, yeah. just clean it just up. resetting with no ults a little bit of a dry fight there just to 
get this stuff online. And Riffery does fall very low to the Moira Orb, but it seems they might have gotten fade back in time to avoid it. That is a fight they did need to win, as they do not have alts, as we said before. But Green Bay now looking to take White Room over on the left side. Close hook there. Uh, if I did land, it would have been over right away. But looking for a beat engage here, it seems. Might be followed yep. up by Visor once it stabilizes a little bit. Got a hook on the Reaper. Not the best target to get on, as their Soldier Pops ultimate on the right side gets the tank. However, it is traded with their other Soldier. Now the point does flip because the Roadhog has fallen, but it seems like I still want to, I still want to go through this fight here. Um, Kiriko does fall low, but Goose is also on the game. Yeah, they're just trading here, and they're oh, but their UW Green Bay commits the Reaper ult to finish up the point. Hog will be backing up here. Yeah, Hog gets out. He's he's got a lot of HP and self healing mechanism. Looks like this is going to be the last fight here. Orisa does have ultimate. Soldier and Lucio probably will get ultimate online during the fight, but they don't have it right away, so... We're going to have to build it up a little bit. Orisa going in right away with ultimate. Lucio might fall if it... No, he gets out in time. Oh, he and gets out of there. The and dodges the spear just barely. Goose taking out the Kiri, which is a big pick. Goose does However. Fall. Tater falling dangerously low with the visor here. Yes, Seems the mic is out. It's back and forth. There's the beat does come online for the UW Green Bay Lucio. Now it's just him and the Reaper from the looks of it. Whole hog out. Reaper will be falling here. Here at the TP's back. You got a wrecking ball online here. You might be able to stall long enough for the for the soldier or the Lucio to come back, but it's yeah, but green. there's four people on Southwest Tech on point. And with that, with the Reaper all just guarding off the point, looks like Southwest Tech will be taking the first map in the tournament. Yeah, As quite a few, quite a few really good death blossoms there to finish out fights. You got the triple one with Goose when they used the five ultimates, which might have been a little bit overkill, but it did seal the fight. And yeah. then another one by Riffry, which did um. Didn't only catch one target, but did a lot of damage to flyers so that they would be able to fell him. I know it's only been one map, but it's been very close so far. 99, the first point. These teams look very even. I'm interested to see what comps they'll roll out on this map. As it's a little more closed. Can't really run the dive comp. More more rush looking here as we have a Arissa and a um, Sigma coming into this map. Yeah, it seems UW Green Bay might be looking more toward a poke type composition, which might do wonders oh. against Sigma's comp, which just likes to, uh, without the use of like a May or a Bastion, might just have to stand away from them or just try and rush onto them and get the first kill. That being said, they did get the first kill with it being the Moira, which is a huge pick to have. So Southwest Tech will be taking this point first. It looks the, like the swap to Zarya for the yeah. UW Green Bay team. Uh, a lot of swaps between the... these two teams. Which kind of just shows like the tank battle. It's very important to have the one up on. As they're just poking here a little bit, trying to get a little charge for the Zarya. Some members chaos. on UW Green Bay, very low. Burning Chaos does look like he's going to get his visor first, and oh, oh. Ajax! Oh, that was a big kill by Goose there. He was just going on the flank as a Reaper and wreaking havoc, and he just got the pick on the Lucio, which is which is huge, especially because they just lost beat. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking as two Lucio players to see, yeah. but you got you got to respect the pick. You got to respect it when it happens. It's crazy that he was able to actually get um get beat that fast compared to fishing kings uh still being at 70 percent for that when he got beat yeah but it looks like they swapped off the lucio now opting for maybe a little more healing with the baptiste and the moira as oh a huge flux here however he gets hacked out of the flux and he gets killed right away what a big hack 
UW Green Bay looking to push forward here without the tank on Southwest Tech, and it looks like they will flip the point. Now, UW Green Bay is coming up on a, on a Graviton Surge here, which I'm not sure if they can easily follow up on it. There's not many... Um, uh, many splash damage heroes besides maybe the soldier, but uh, they do spit it out here. The counter beat with that might be looking for something like a uh, uh, motor out here or death blossom. Um, does catch two it seems, uh, but there was not enough speed it looks like to actually continue toward the rest of the team. Whether or not yeah, with planned, the with the knows. Reaper playing in your team, you kind of need the speed to a little like back out. Because then, with the Moira and Lucia on their team, they could just like walk into you. Mm -hmm. That being said, Green Bay switches over to Doom. Kind of a little desperation just so they will be able to touch. However, that's a big punch there. Getting the Lucio low as well. Yeah, Green Bay coming up on three ults here. Oh, another big punch. As well as the EMP just to close this one out. Looks like Green Bay will be taking the point back. They also use the window there. But they do still have some ultimates in the bank. They'll probably get soldier all pretty quickly. That uh, AG on the Doom got 60% ultimate in one fight, so maybe they'll get Doom ultimate in this next fight. Yeah, depending on how they, how long they uh, play this choke for, it's only like two or three slams until he gets his ultimate. Right. Which would be a could... great get out of jail free card. As they use a coal early, as I think they're just gonna go in with the, oh, oh, oh with the Doom, but the Moira gets picked maybe. Peeking just a little bit too far there. They use a coal in response. Averting Chaos as well is as going visor. to come up with a visor here. But he might just be killed during it. Yeah. Yes, he just got killed right away. It was They had to use it though, because it was 99%, and with that, it looks like Southwest Tech is taking the first map in the Battle of Wisconsin. Some pretty good stuff from both teams we saw there. Yeah, it seemed very even battles, but Southwest Tech might have had. It seems like a better counter swap play. Switching over to the Roadhog to counter the Winston and getting many early picks here. Yeah, the early picks with the Hog was pretty substantial, at least in the first map. And then the second map, I think the Lucio, the Moira with the Sig poking and their, their Reaper in the back line, it was just really hard to deal with. For UW Green Bay. So that was a good look for um Southwest. Yeah, we'll see if it we'll see if it holds up for the for the few other maps that we're gonna play. Right, as we are going into escort next, I believe. So while we look at these maps, what do you what are you thinking for comp wise for some of these escort maps? Let's say they take them to circuit. Is it still like a Sigma meta? Do people dive? Um, I've seen some dive, but uh, most teams just tend to stick with uh, like a double sniper composition on, on circuit. Right, with double sniper with a Sigma, maybe a, maybe even a Zen sometimes. Mm -hmm. Bap the Zen, Zen Bap very out good. There. Zen is very good on circuit, I, I agree. Um, um, yeah, if it's, if it's that... not circuit... Like, let's say they take them to Eichenwald. Is there is there another comp that you'd see? Maybe maybe more rush. Maybe, um, maybe still dive. I don't know. Maybe still poke. Yeah, for that, um, especially for Eichenwald, tons of high ground areas. Uh, maybe for the once once the team caps, they might switch to dive for a little bit just to clear the high ground, unless one of the DPS want to go up there or rotate up the high ground and clear that for themselves. But I am thinking that um, Rush might be better just to get past the first choke point because that is very overwhelming for teams. Eichenwald is a hybrid map, so I don't know why I said that for Escort, but I don't know. I think I was just excited to see Eichenwald in the map pool. I I really like that map as long as uh, <laughs> along with King's Row. But Watchpoint Gibraltar, widely known as the dive map, I say, when it comes to Escort. 
it's really hard to run those rush comps with the high grounds and everything. You can do poke. You could just like hold the corner, hold the high grounds. But definitely, I would, I would less likely see a Arissa there or like a Rhine, maybe even a Ram. I do not think that it will go that way if it goes to watch point. There's also Route 66 and Rialto. Do you have mm-hmm. any, any anything about those maps in particular? Um, Route 66. Um, I feel like that's really just how the team plays. Not really, not really what composition they're running, because both Brawl works very well. Uh, there might be some issues with high ground, but if you just get the cart around that point, you can just run underneath gas station, meet them up on high ground. And oh? you tend to beat most poke comps with that, just rushing on them really quickly. Looks or like you we could do have our map pick, though. Gibraltar. And yes, it is Gibraltar, the dive map. You might map. see might... some poke. Yeah, um, might be might be seeing some D.Va here, even. Uh, yeah, some D.Va. Some Winston, some D.Va, something like that. Yeah. We did see one team, I believe it was Southwest... Wait, no, no, it was actually Green Bay that pulled out the Winston in the first round, so it'd be interesting to see if they opt for that comp again, at least on attack. I don't know if they would opt for it on defense. They could. Yeah, might be I, more toward D.Va on defense if, if that would be If they go with the dive kind of variant. I know a lot of teams kind of just like maybe a little more poke on defense, so maybe a Sigma, maybe something mm-hmm. like that. Sigma Ash maybe? Just setting up on the high ground there. Yeah, Sigma there. Ash. I don't see a lot of watch point in Gibraltar, at least in in, li- in least tournaments like these and OWCS and stuff like that. I feel like it's a it's a map that's kind of unnecessarily hated on. Well, I don't know if it's just because like it's the a rush brutal teams, map. It um, is kind of a brutal map. The high ground is very oppressive. Yeah, and even just having to go through the car wash at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, just, the car wash. Yeah, it's just a mess to get through. Yeah, they they did talk about um in a recent developer update um messing with the maps a little bit and changing them around. I know they did this on the third point in Gibraltar. They moved the spawn back, they kind of put a wall there. It did help a little bit and it felt like a little less campy because I feel like you could camp the doors in third point a lot and you could kind of get out. You have a little more breathing room on defense on third point. Yeah. It's it's a back and forth map, I'll say the least. Like, I think the first point it's really hard to attack into, and then sometimes if you're getting rolled in third point, you could get trapped in spawn. So, yeah, and then especially for second point, if they set up on the high ground there, it's yeah. going to take a lot of work to dislodge them. Uh, I know a lot of people like to just sit up there with like a widowmaker if they're in a good position to do that. As we're getting back into it here in the second map, um, it looks like UW Green Bay going to be on the attack first. I uh, don't know if they're going to be rolling out on this monkey gun. Oh, no. They're switching to the Rissa. We still got 30 seconds. Might switch up. Southwest Tech looking at the poke a little bit with the Life Weaver. Life Weaver Ana. That's very a very interesting, interesting composition. <laughs> yeah, um... I mean. It is high healing output. The anti-nade could be very useful, of course. Ana's anti-nade, probably her strongest part of her kit. Might be just looking for like a poke type thing here. Because yeah. all five it, of them are very self-sufficient. With it is a very grasp. self-sufficient team. Um, the Weaver kind of could, you know... At least at least the DPS are. The Weavers can help the Ana. Yeah, with uh, Ana's recent buff to her splash grenade... Uh, doing 90 healing for herself, it does a lot. Life Weaver himself can heal himself a lot just with his dash and also get out of the way if needed. Looks like Green Bear going back to this Winston Sombra comp with Moira Lucio as the supports. And they're just kind of, they're just pushing it under the bridge right now. They're just getting a little push in. It looked like somebody was left behind, but... Uh... Not sure if Southwest was going to take advantage of that. And, Ooh, and big he sleep. Is eliminated here. Big sleep onto their Winston as well as an anti nade, eliminating them right away. And now all these players are just getting funneled in 
to, like you said, the car wash. And just like that, Southwest Tech won the first fight. They did get the push under the bridge. Sometimes that could be a little annoying. So looks like we're they're swapping right away to this Arisa comp again. Yeah, now that they've had, they got past the high ground right there, they can just go directly under the car wash, or over it on a little bit of a flank, and then... Oh, it uh, looks like they're brawl. taking the fight a, to them. Yeah, a little bit of a brawl right here, just to dislodge the poke composition. As they got the bash in Larissa, very high damage output here. Hater does fall dangerously low, but it seems that the supports do have his back here. Looks like they are backing up a little, giving the high ground over. Which is okay for Southwest Tech, because they could just um, use the corner as like a little anchor point. However, this Bastion coming up on the high ground could be troublesome. Especially through the back line here. Or Goose blocks them off. Ooh, big freeze catching both supports however they kind of like scooch out of it so they got a little bit away from it as goose goes down and so does their life weaver it looks like southwest tech might be backing up here as Double kill ooh. terra surge trying to escape just doesn't let them and they did commit nano here they did commit nano that was two ultimates from UW Green Bay. They used Cole and uh, Larissa Alt. Life Weaver does get staggered here a little bit. It looks like and they might, Goose even might get staggered here too. Through oh. here. Barely got away the man. Two alts from both sides, so they have three alts on each side. Um, the tank alts, probably the most important on Southwest Tech right now, as well as the beat on UW Green Bay. Might be a little hard to use the the Gravitic Flux here just because of the constant threat of the Sombra just hacking hacking him out of his ultimate. Right, and she has EMP. Ops not to use it because he uses the Flux into the beat. So the more I got able to heal them up up there and uh, there was no threat in them dying. That was a big nade though. From fishing. I uh, was a. Looks like a three man EMP, but they were not really in a position to follow up there. Uh, they were being yeah, held especially with, the with their tanks falling, like almost immediately after the EMP. It was a great nade from their Ana to get onto the tank. Now they are pushed up quite a bit here, and they get walled and an tied. Another big nade and a big wall there. Southwest Tech did use their visor there. Don't know if that was completely necessary, but it did get that Lucio down pretty quickly. As their Sombra also gets staggered a little bit by the Life Weaver. They come back quickly, though. And if we look at the ultimate compositions now... I mean, the ultimate charges now. We got three alts on Southwest Tech. Uh, Close to ultimates on UW Green Bay. Burden Chaos Falls. Great rock. Sending him out of his escape attempt and just finish off with the spears. Now, I do not think there are going to be any ultimates used here oh. for Green Bay Ops to use the coalescence. Um, oh, but their Sigma gets Sigma really low in the Life to... Weaver. <laughs> it's really Sigma low as does well. Die here. But Sigma does die here. Ooh, that health pack kept Orisa up as they're as UW Green Bay Huge is anti. continuing to push forward. Oh, 8 HP on the Orisa. That would have been a huge pick to, for the recontest, but Oh, they do opt for the recontest with the Gravitic Flux. However, it was just beat back and he gets hacked and he gets eliminated right away. With all that, UW Green Bay will get the second point. Yeah, trying to retake that right there is especially dangerous because if it doesn't go well, you just have five people there or four without the tank.
who yeah. are just there to feed Green Bay's ult charge. I, I got the vision though, because they did have four ultimates, so if the Nano went on to the, the Sigma and maybe they got the tree in there, you know, there was a possible for a recontest there, but that hack really kind of put a damper in it. As they go in with the freeze right away. Does not seem to catch anybody. UW Green Bay backing up pretty bit. nicely. Vern Chaos does pop visor, but it seems he might have been standing in the open, so is quickly dispatched. Yeah. They almost got out scot free, but then the pick on the soldier was a big one. So now they need to reset, and it looks like they're coming back in here. They have EMP, big ultimate. There was a big anti into the back line, and a big rock, getting the Lucio right away. No speed for UW Green Bay in this fight, but they're going to commit the EMP and still go in and get the tank right away. Although Remand here might not work out that well just because of uh, the great usage of high ground here by the Southwest Tech Soldier. It will pepper them without much of any contention from Green Bay. Right. And since the... Sombra was going in with the EMP, she wasn't contesting the high ground for the soldier, and he just got free rain down on them. So I'm interested to see, maybe they'll send the Sombra up there to get the soldier down, maybe they'll all go up there themselves. Lucio gets anti gets out though. The big rock on the tank. They have to use coal, there's only 20 seconds left. I'm pretty sure they could get a regroup on this if they want to. Sombra does take the high ground from the soldier. It's a big sleep onto the Moira. However, she gets away with like one HP left. Huge oh, gravitic and a flux here. Huge gravitic flux with the nano and the rock onto a DPS and a support. Winston coming back to touch. However, Soldier's back on the high ground. There's a Sombra able to touch for a little bit longer, but I think... Oh, there's there are two players coming back. However, they have Tree and Freeze on point. That being said, Lucio is the one contesting at the moment. And with that, it looks like... UW Green Bay will be stopped a little bit short on point three. Kind of around the corner area. Pretty good push from Green Bay. I That round I saw a lot of good antis and a lot of good rocks from Southwest. Yeah, and great ult usages by both teams. Uh, they're able to maintain having at least one or two ults available at all times for use. And it did help turn fights in their favor, even if they were down their tank. Yes, I totally agree. The alt usage was great. We didn't have a, really a fight where they used all five at once or anything like that. There were some early picks happening on uh, the side of UW Green Bay. They were getting picked a little bit early sometimes, and they... Uh, I think they might have overcommitted maybe one or two ultimates as... They're down one, they're like, we're going to use ultimate and bring this back. Sometimes it worked in their favor, sometimes it did not. It's a risky move to take. Seems Southwest Tech is coming up with the Ryan composition here. <laughs> it is very interesting as Full on stated, here. The, stated the before the map, we were saying how Ryan is, this is probably like a Rush comp's least favorite map. However, we saw the Orisa Rush work. Maybe the Ryan comp will work too. ZW Green Bay ops more for the poke comp with Kiri Moira. So no Lucio on their side. Southwest does have the speed advantage. I'd imagine they're just going to TP directly up there and then just wreak havoc without being able to speed out. <laughs> right when you said that, TP right onto the high ground, getting the tank down. The Lucio does fall, getting picks on both sides. There's no supports for UW Green Bay right or for Southwest Tech right now. Going back to the cart to get a little more push, it looks like UW Green Bay is going for a reset. Do you have a couple people still up on the high ground? 
So it looks like they're going for the TP up onto the high ground again. Both supports almost getting trapped by the Rhine. However, at the same time, Goose does go down. Could be disastrous uh, without the ability to just teleport around. They can't easily leave in areas, especially with the Lucio falling now. Yeah, it was really close for the Rhine. He almost got the picks onto at least one of the supports there. However, he got split from his team, and while he was getting split from the team, the rest of the team got collapsed on, and it looks like UW Green Bay won the fight with their a little more pokey style comp. And now Southwest Tech is going to the Sigma as well. Got a Sigma mirror going on. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It worked well for them on the first push around the first defense, and it might work for them here, too. That is true. Mercy gets a res off onto the Sigma, but I still think they're going to reset here as they get picked pretty quickly by UW-Green Bay. Averted Soldier does sleeping. Slept, but jumps perfectly behind the shield, so no damage can be put onto them. back up however goose does get a pick early on here so uw green bay will be down one for this fight as they're backing up slowly up onto the high ground multiple alts going out both three dps going out seeing if uh the soldier can get a pick off with this beam but it does not look like they will this flyer goes down but gets resid resed Sorry, immediately by the Mercy, which is huge. As she was in Valk, makes it a little bit easier. And wins the fight for Southwest Tech. I want to point out, while this was all going down, they weren't pushing the card underneath. How so there might be a chance that UW Green Bay touches here with the multiple alts that they have, and it looks like they are. Vidic fluxes on both sides, killing one each, but Flyer is able to kill the tank as well, so they are able to push through this. Yeah, they were, they were pushing into a Gravitics Flux versus coming in with a Gravitics Flux. I think it's uh, kind of an advantage on Flyer in that case. He gets the Gravitics Flux off first, and that being said, they won the fight. And... Looks like we're going over to point two as we are having a battle of the high ground early. However, Southwest Tech opts to jump down as they get pushed off. Uh, Soldier um, on the high ground. Goose does switch over to Tracer, which makes sense. Uh, without the um, without some close range damage with like a Reinhardt, uh, it doesn't really make sense to keep the Symmetra. Uh, does get more pressure from other angles. Out. However, he gets rezzed and the Bastion gets the pick on the Moira and both supports are down and now Flyer is wreaking havoc. And it looks like this might be a third point hold or a third point take, that is second point tank for uh, Southwest Tech. Now they are holding somewhat close here, um, which is a little bit interesting. I don't know if I've ever seen an attempt to be held here. Just yeah, it looks it's... like it's going to be one fight territory for UW Green Bay, so they're trying to hold close. They get a pick on the Mercy, however, they also get their um, Kiriko picks. Ooh, and with the pick onto their Sigma, this is not looking very good, and with the... With the Sigma ult, it drags them all off point, and that is the map for Southwest. I think this was a solid uh, map by Flyer. His Sigma play was very great. Whenever they were on the Sigma comp, I feel like they had a slight edge over UW Green Bay. Um, I also did like the antis on defense. Definitely. Anna, we were questioning a bit a bit. We were questioning it a bit with the Ana and the Life Weaver at first, but I think it actually did work out pretty well. 
I'm not sure exactly about the Life Weaver, but um, Life Weaver was a good pick. I saw um, I saw quite a few pulls on the tank just to get him out of danger, and also um, I did see near the end of that uh, when UW Green Bay was trying to push and Terra Surge was being used, um, we're able to just lift up the Orisa out of her ultimate and essentially make it vote or make it void. Right. And with that, that is map two done. We are going to maybe our final map. Maybe UW Green Bay will bring it back. It is still a pretty close game in my eyes. And we're going to take a little short break. We'll be right back after this for map three. I will see you guys then. Hello and welcome back to the Battle of Wisconsin. It is Dish here. And um, we're going to come at you with a little update. A little sneak peek on other matches going around um, at the same time in the Battle of Wisconsin. Currently, Whitewater is 1-1 one one against UW Stevens Point. Stout is 1-0 and over UW Madison. That should be a really good game. I'm interested to see what the outcome of that game will be and Carthage is 2-0 against UW Platteville and of course as we know Southwest taking map 2 against Green Bay and that is where we are with the standings there will be more of an update hopefully after this match is done and 
yeah, what 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 do, you, what do you think coming into map map number three? What do you think UW Medicine might do to I don't know spice things up, change things up, try to get back into the game? Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's, it did seem pretty confident to begin with on the <coughs> on the Winston pick. I think it was just a little a little unfortunate that they happened to run into an Ana on a map where most people don't run Ana. Uh, it did end up working for Southwest Tech, but <coughs> might be leaning toward a Winston again. Although it being Suravasa might be going toward like a again like a brawler or a rush pick. Uh, I know Arissa Junker Queen is very commonly picked on this. Yeah, the Junker Queen comps are pretty popular on the Flashpoint maps. I the I know the Ana was very very strong. The Ana Life Weaver. I wouldn't be surprised if both teams go with the Lucio here. I think speed is uh, the most valuable thing, at least on these Flashpoint maps. They help you even potentially get an extra fight on a point, and it's just good to uh, work around the speed when it comes to Flashpoint. Definitely, especially with how few fights you can actually get per point. Uh, even one additional fight would be very good. Yeah, yeah, one additional fight could be the map, if if anything. Um, if they if they end up going on the Ana again, I'm interested to see if maybe Madison pulls out a Kiri. I know Lucio Kiri is probably one of the strongest backlines, at least meta wise, at this point. Um, and did I say Madison? I meant, <laughs> I meant, sorry, I, I was, I was still paying attention to the stout Madison score. I meant, um, what's it called? Green Bay. <laughs> Green Bay. Madison, Green Bay. Both big cities in Wisconsin. I'm sorry. However, I think Kiri might be the play. I wonder if any teams are going to play Kiri. I don't... We we saw Kiri once, I think, so far in this map. I mean, in this match. But I don't think it was paired with the Lucio at all, so... I'm curious to see if either of these teams pull that out. Yeah, especially with the... If they do end up running Junker Queen, that would be very good counter to her ultimate. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Queen's ultimate without... Anything to counter it is probably one of the strongest in the game, if not the strongest. Disaster. Maybe not the strongest, but it, it's a disaster. Yeah, disastrous ult. It will destroy your team, especially if you don't have a cleanse. Especially because in this map, you will see a little more rush style. Maybe you see a Doomfist on this map, actually. But oh, maybe. Um, when it's like the rush style, everyone's grouped up, so the queen ult. Usually hits multiple people. If we see maybe an Orisa again, because I know these teams have been fiddling with Orisa a little bit, it, there's a possibility she could get speared out of it. Lucio could kind of boop her out of the way. There, there are still some counters without Kiri to uh, Doom Punch. Like I said, some people fancy the Doom on these maps. Yeah. Sombra, Sombra could hack her out of it. Although that's that's a little bit of a short window. It's kind of hard to do. Without EMP, that is, but um, if they, I wouldn't be surprised if, if we see Sombra as well. If they do end up running the May again, might be able to wall her off. I know that's a much shorter window. That is also pretty um, hard, but it is possible. Yeah. Uh, even then, that's good, because you can either just block <laughs> off the ult entirely, or just separate her from her healers, and then just burst her down while she's there in the open. Right, as we come here into Servasa. 20 seconds till the start of the map. We do see a queen on UW Green Bay's side. I, w I would be interested to see if Hog comes out on um, Southwest Tech. I've heard Hog is a little bit of a sleeper pick, at least when it comes to these comps. I, I, I'm not the best. I mean, I'm not the Hog, the biggest Hog supporter or anything, but I think what he's let's, very let's good see how at it works out. I think what Hog's really good at is creating and denying space with his newly reworked ability Pigpen. You can just throw that somewhere and then just slows down everyone near it. Right. Really good and for it's building a good... ultimate, getting damage. Yeah, and it's good to counter the Junker Queen who just wants to kind of run right into you. 
It looks Another like one. Southwest Tech. Ooh. Oh, early pick on the Moira. Good Good pick on the Moira. Kind of getting the space a little bit early. A flyer is running very low, so he does fall off point, but does not seem to matter. Southwest Tech is able to finish up those who are on point, and uh, Randall Master does seem to get away. Yeah, with the Junker Queen comp, you do want to kind of get in there fast, kind of get it in there early. Maybe go on to <clears throat> the Soldier in the comp, excuse me. Um, with oh another early pick onto the Moira, that's probably the best pick you can get into this comp, other than the Junker Queen. And Green Bay kind of stalling out a little bit. However, they kind of capitalize on Flyer trying to get a little overzealous with that hook. Now, <clears throat> the tank for Green Bay does fall, but Refry comes up and just ends up defeating everybody. Yeah, Refry with the Reaper play there. With his ultimate online, he is 40% higher than Goose right now. He, he got that ultimate pretty quickly for a Reaper ultimate. Yeah, both um, DPS players on Green Bay do have their ultimates, and the only thing that might be able to counter them is Southwest Coalescence. Which... Yeah, and they're getting kind of close to the Lucio beat as well. Let's see if they use the ultimates proactively. First ultimate comes out is the Moira ult, but the Reaper ult gets three. A big blossom there from Refry. His Reaper is doing work so far on this map. Now they do try and chase down Kevin LeBlanc and they do end up catching him. It's a good stagger pick. Yeah, he was able to get UW Green Bay. That being said, there's 85%. Are they going to yeah. be able to touch this together as a team? As soon as they do want to take it, it might be very difficult without additional help from the, um, from the Moira for heals. I, oh, I don't know what happened. I think the... Out. Ooh. I think the Junker Queen all got booped there, as the Junker Queen all did not connect onto anybody. Now, and, the the uh, beat does come out for Green Bay, or it is used, but he gets stopped in a corner by the Roadhog Ultimate and Ajaxes. Unfortunately, well, I did not catch that. But I, yeah, the the Junker Queen all also did not connect onto anybody. I think that was a big boop from Ramble. And I don't think Green Bay touches here. It's 99%. They try to touch, but they do not get it in time. And they just get torn apart as they almost touch a point. It's, it's 99 to 99. They wanted to go for it. Didn't get it in time. Refry First one goes does get out. Which is pretty cool. Uh, it helps to feed the Green Bay's ultimates, or support ultimates, a bit more after they tried to use them last fight. But, um, Southwest is opting to hold it close here, and Vernon Chaos gets hooked into the pig pen. Yeah, these hooks are going very well for Southwest as the Moira ult comes out just to clean up the rest of the squad, and with that... UW Green Bay falls and Southwest gets the point first. Coming into the next fight, they have Reaper Alt. They're going to have Visor. Um, possibility of building up Queen Alt, 30% away. And no support alts to counteract that. So keep an eye out on Refry and Verdant. Coming into this fight. It seems they might be a little safe here from the hook because it was just used, but as they push up here, I can imagine Squishy kinda, being hooked in. Kind of weighing the queue up. Reaper gets hooked in. He decides to use the the ult right away to get the the hog off of him, and then they use Verdant's ult as well. And like I said, they did not have any support ults to counteract that. So 84% to Southwest Tech, so it is one fight territory for them. To take this point, however, Green Bay does get control. Oh, 
lot of ultimates coming in this next fight. Huge purple under the hog here. Out of three yeah. of them, actually. Might have also hit it on Goose. It just fades out. Oh? But Goose uses his ult to counteract it, and they get three picks. It's a 2v... It's a 3v1 now. And what looks like UW Green Bay winning that fight with those two early picks, the Reaper ult is used, and they take it back, and it, look, it might be the point. It looks like it is. UW uh, Green Bay backing out a little bit. Southwest Tech looking pretty healthy in the ultimate department. This is going to be pretty tough to push in for UW Green Bay. However, they do have the beat that is coming online soon. Ooh, Moira gets hooked early again. I think that's the third time this map and the whole hog comes out to push them back. Try to get a fast fight win. They do commit the visor too for cleanup, so that is two alts. Maybe a slight little over usage, but they still have ultimates in the bank. They still have both support ultimates, which are both very strong. Can counteract both DPS ultimates coming up with Green Bay, but they do all have beat as well. Second like early beat engage from UW Green Bay, South Southwest Tech beating in response. Whole lesson still online for Southwest Tech. Verdant is set up on high ground, so he's able to pepper away everyone below it. But it seems coming back and forth Tech is falling here. It's three v two right now on point, as we get the view of the hog in the spot, as um. It looks like um, their Junker Queen does clean up here, and UW Green Bay does win the fight. Once again, though, 78%. That is pretty close to one fight territory. They might be able to touch that. Yeah, with the 3 to 4 kills that the Junker Queen just got, they did wonders to feed the ultimate charge, like 30 to 40%. So they're going to get it here. Um, Ooh, another big early pick, pick by the Roadhog Cook. Um... Seems it might, yeah, you just clean out here just to try and quell the It's on approach. both of the supports. However, they do not fall. And with that, it looks like Southwest Tech is going to take the point. Goose has an ultimate. They're going to the ball to touch if they can get a touch, that is. Soldier trying to live on the outside here does not look like he is going to give as he gets live as he gets hooked at by hog they do get a touch here yeah, no ultimates online outside. for green bay though it did bring everybody off of point so it could bring back three people but with just the lack of additional damage um and the use of a death blossom here southwest tech does just to clean up finish this southwest up. wins it and with that that is the first win on cast of the battle for Wisconsin. We got Southwest taking the victory 3-0 over Green Bay. Um, I thought it was a pretty strong performance by Southwest. I, I was questioning the hog pick and I, I shouldn't have. The hog got some insane picks early on and especially onto that Moira which is just such a uh, such a Crucial important pick. character. Yeah, crucial pick. It's a crucial pick. That's a main source of healing gone. It's not like they're playing hog either. They can't heal themselves. Queen gets a little bit of healing from her damage. But nowhere near to the extent that hog has. Yeah, nowhere um, near to the extent that hog has. So their hog um, it is going real well for them. Their hog went real well for them. And with that, they took the victory. Um... I thought it was a pretty pretty good game, pretty close game. Uh, I feel like Southwest got a little more comfortable as it went on. The first two maps maybe a little closer than the last one. Um, that being said, I'm going to get into a little more score updates.
For the first win of the battle for Wisconsin, it is Carthage who took a 3-0 over Platteville. Uh, Stout Madison, um, an update to that game. I know you are all interested, or a lot of people are, considering this is hosted by Stout, and we're on the Stout Twitch right now. It is 1-1, Stout Madison, 1-1. Whitewater, UW-Stevens Point, it is 1-1 as well. And then Lakeland takes a 3-0 over, over Marquette. And that being said, do you have anything else left to say, Logan? Um, just that the next match that is being streamed will be at 2.45 today. So in about 45 minutes or so. All right, yeah. 2.45, next match coming up for you. We're going to have different casters. I would like to thank UW Stout and the production team for having both of us here from UW Milwaukee. We have a match to get to as well. Whitewater versus Marquette coming up next at 245. We will see you then. I hope you all have a great day. Signing out. Farewell. <laughs>